It has been approximately one year and four months since I felt any need to rotate the camera on my telescope. And the answer to why is simply that I've gone square. You see, one year and five months ago, I bought the Player One Ares M camera, which has the Sony IMX533 sensor on it. And the sensor, as you can see in this image, is shaped like a square. Now, I'll be completely honest with you. I wrestled with the decision to buy this camera. I had never in my life before used a camera with a square sensor. And I kept thinking that all the compositional training that I had had over the years that I had studied some art classes out of mere interest in university and shot some professional photography, it all involved rectangular sensors. I mean, heck, even if you paint a picture or create a drawing, you're working in a rectangular format. Most artist paper comes in rectangles. They're vertical on the tablet generally, but they're still rectangles. And while you can get backgrounds like canvases in any shape, most frequently they come as rectangles. And in contrast to convention, here was this camera offering a sensor in the form of a square. And I was dubious. I freely admit I was dubious. In the end, it wasn't the square shape of the sensor that convinced me to buy this camera. It was the incredible reputation of the Sony IMX533 sensor when applied to astrophotography. This sensor is noted for very low electronic noise and there is no amp glow whatsoever, greatly simplifying its need for calibration frames. In fact, using this camera, all that I ever shoot is a bias once every six months and my morning flat frames. But the thing that was most noteworthy about this sensor was simply that it was very sensitive. It did very well with astrophotography. And even though that squared sensor made me very apprehensive, in the end I decided to get it. And the truth was, even as I set it up on the telescope, I was still dubious. But once I took my first image, I was hooked. You see, there is nothing we astrophotographers like more than having to change the rotation of our sensors, right? Especially for me, living in Canada, there is nothing more fun than going outside on a dark winter night when it's minus 30 and having to touch metal with your bare hands to rotate a camera sensor to a different angle. But even if it's not that much of an extreme, changing camera rotation is somewhat tedious. ZWO now has a reasonably priced remote operated camera rotator. And I'm pretty sure there are more soon to follow from other manufacturers. But at this point in time, I simply haven't given any thought to buying a camera rotator. Not with the Sony IMX533 sensor. Because it turns out, it's hip to be square. The simple reality is that if astro camera sensors were made for telescopes, they would be square, they would all be square, or perhaps they would even be circular, and here's why. The field of view that is created by any telescope is itself circular, and short of a circle, a square is going to fit into that best, much better anyway, than a rectangle. Now I talked about, in another video, how I'm not really fond of full-size sensors for astrophotography cameras because they require careful tilt adjustment. With partial sensors, I can pretty much figure out the back focus and screw into the telescope. Job done. And the Sony IMX533 sensor is a 1-inch sensor, so in that sense, for my philosophy or my approach to astrophotography, it's perfect. But the fact that it's square means I have just simply never had to worry about reorienting the sensor. Orientation is mostly about composing the side-to-side -side data to try to make it fit into your photo as best as possible. But here's the thing, most of the images that we are shooting in space, whether planets, the sun, the moon, or deep sky objects, they don't really follow a side-to-side -side pattern. On Earth, things do because gravity pulls things down toward the ground, and we humans have evolved a wide side-to-side -side field of view to accommodate that, as have many animals. But gravitational forces pull things together, generally in some sort of roughly spherical form, and repulsive forces, such as those generated by fusion and explosions, push things apart, also in roughly spherical dimensions. There are very few objects in deep space that would really benefit from a rectangular orientation. One that comes immediately to mind is the Andromeda Galaxy. Beyond that, almost everything in space works just fine, or even better, with a square sensor. And most of the objects that are somewhat dish-shaped or flattened, like many galaxies, are often too far away, thus too small, to benefit from a rectangular sensor. And because of that, square sensors pretty much never have to be reoriented, maybe in some very rare case, but I haven't yet found it. 
Over 2024, I shot some 30 deep sky objects, and not one would have benefited from me reorienting the square sensor. Here are some examples. To be honest, I hope camera sensor makers continue making square sensors and astro camera makers continue to use them. The fact that with a square sensor, you don't ever have to worry about rotating your sensor just makes them so convenient. Pick your target, orient toward it in plate solve, and begin shooting. Nothing further to worry about. Because of this, I can guarantee you, whenever it's time for me to buy the next astro camera, I'll be looking first and foremost for one with a square sensor. The sensor shape like I said, I was dubious. I was so dubious about getting a camera with a square sensor that I literally hesitated for two months before pulling the trigger and actually buying the thing. And now that I do have an Astro camera with a square sensor, I would hesitate to go back. I would literally hesitate before buying an Astro camera with a traditional rectangular sensor, whether that's four by three, 16 by nine, whatever. I would much rather have a square sensor. I guess even better would be a circular sensor, but that I'm sure is a pipe dream. So this video is just some food for thought for you in case you're considering buying your next Astro camera or your first one for that matter. Sadly, there are not too many square sensors on the market right now. The only one I know of offhand is the Sony IMX 533, but there are several makers, Player One, CWO and TubeTech come to mind, and I think, at least I hope there are others, but those are the ones that I know of. Of them, and I'm not trying to be biased here, but of them, I think the Player One is the most capable. Player One is well known for pushing the technology a bit further. They make their cameras lighter with carbon fiber cases, and they also have considerably deeper full wells. And, well, just take a look at their website. They push the camera specs further than are pushed by the electronics of the other manufacturers. Not that the others are bad, I'm not at all saying that. Just Player One pushes a bit further. But many persons know that I'm very fond of Player One cameras. I have three of them. And the key reason is incredible customer service. As in, if you need something, these guys get back to you right away and they will make it right. They will absolutely make it right. They will go the extra mile. You don't have to fight with them, push them about it. They're a company that has always had a great reputation for customer service. Anyway, I'm not running an ad for Player One, so I'm not gonna go any further than that. What I am saying is, if you're in the market for an Astro camera, give a Square Sensor a thought, and maybe ask your Astro camera makers to make more of them, because <laughs> it is so nice not having to worry about camera rotation. I was always tweaking rotation with my previous camera, which had a Sony IMX585 sensor. And of course, I did that with the mirrorless cameras I was using before then. And it's workable, it's not terrible. But I'll never forget that one minus 30 night I had to go outside and change the rotation of that camera after dark, and that was miserable. But since going square, I've literally never had to give thought to changing the camera's rotation again. Thanks for watching, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on the matter. Just leave them in the comment section. Now have a blast doing astrophotography. Many clear nights to you and get out there and shoot the sky.